This is the 2023 Triumph Rocket R3, an all-out performance roadster that just happens to have the largest displacement engine of any production motorcycle. This motorcycle is truly a beast, and today on Cruise Man's Garage, we're going to do a walk around, talk about the specs, and then take this bad boy out for a ride. The 2023 Rocket 3R has a 66-inch wheelbase, a seat height of only 30.4 inches, and a total height of only 41.9 inches. This combined with a handlebar width of 35 inches makes this a perfect fit for most riders. Now at 6 foot 2 inches tall with a 33-inch inseam, I did feel a little bit cramped on the Rocket. But I believe a 5 foot 6 inch to 6 foot tall rider would kind of be the sweet spot for this bike before any adjustments would be needed. The bike is no lightweight at 641 pounds dry, but it is 40 pounds lighter than the previous generation. And the 4.8 gallon fuel tank should take you around 150 miles. And honestly, on a bike like this, you'll probably want to get off and stretch your legs before you run out of fuel. You know, when you're sitting on this Triumph Rocket R3, you're looking at a relatively small but very well-designed TFT dashboard. And even though it is kind of small, it does include all the information you'd ever want to see. It's a digital tack, digital speedometer. It's got a couple of different themes so you can change the look of it. Tons of idiot lights to tell you what's going on with the motorcycle, turn signals, gear change or gear indicator. It's got your ambient temperature, clock, your standard clock. It's just got a lot of information, plus a trip computer. They've done a very nice job with it, and I will say that in this bright sunlight here in Texas, no problem seeing this screen while you're riding. But Triumph also offers an upgrade to the TFT system that allows you to do a lot more with navigation, Bluetooth connectivity, turn-by-turn -turn direction navigation. Uh, it allows you to even control a GoPro camera from the menu system and from the hand controls. It's very, very cool. While we're on the topic of hand controls, I found all of the switches and controls very easy to reach and very easy to learn. Everything's very logically laid out. On the right-hand control, you'll find an electronic fork lock and the button to control the hazard lights. Farther down, you'll find a large rocker switch that serves as an ignition on-off and the engine start button. The home button can be used to return the TFT screen to the home menu. On the left-hand control, you'll find a flash to pass and high beam switch, which can be controlled by your left forefinger. There's also a cruise control rocker switch that's very easy to understand. The ride mode button can be used to change riding modes even while the motorcycle is in motion. The turn signal switch is within easy reach of your left thumb, as is the horn button and a very intelligently designed joystick for controlling the menu system on the TFT screen. I was pleasantly surprised to find that all of the switches are backlit for night riding. Rider mode has plenty of power for me. It, it 
feels pretty amazing just the rider mode I can't even imagine what sport mode's like it must be insane I've heard some people say that in sport mode the front wheel can come off the ground I guarantee you I am not going to do that today this is not my motorcycle and I'm not comfortable thrashing it like that I do notice a little popping in the motorcycle in the engine almost sounds like it's backfiring a little bit uh, but the mufflers are catching it but you can hear it kind of pop as you're riding uh, in about 3,000 rpm you'll occasionally hear it pop a little bit the rocket 3r can be set to any of three ride modes road rain or sport which will adjust the throttle response traction control and abs brakes for riding conditions you can also customize a rider mode to suit your personal riding style okay nobody behind me okay let's see what it does getting to about maybe 4,000 rpm bike has a lot more left in it okay we're gonna go down to oh god sport mode I I'm not sure about this this is uh, cruise man Uh, it's nice knowing you. I don't. I'm not going to be able to give this thing all it's got. I know that. Oh, Jesus. Jesus Christ. Holy shit. This thing is insane. This ought, to, this ought to be illegal. Now that power is coming from this 2458 cc, that's right, 2.5 liter inline three cylinder engine with 10.8 to one compression. This thing puts out 165 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 163 pound feet of torque at only 4,000 RPM. That's the highest torque so Triumph tells us of any production motorcycle and I believe it. It's also the largest production engine on any motorcycle being produced today. This thing is literally a beast. It is massive, it's intimidating, and it is, it's a ride like none other you'll find anywhere else. Now all that power is getting to the rear wheel through a six speed manual transmission and a drive shaft to the rear wheel. I did not push this bike anywhere close to its limits, uh, but as far as what I did have a chance to experience, I thought the uh, transmission is one of the smoothest, easiest shifting transmissions I've ridden so far. Very easy to find neutral, very easy to shift. I thought everything from the drivetrain perspective performed flawlessly. Time for the braking test. Nobody behind me. Oh man. This thing really stops. It's got those Brembo brakes are potent. Now that braking was just accomplished with two 320 millimeter rotors, each one with a four piston Brembo caliper. The front wheel is a 17 by three and a half inch cast aluminum wheel wrapped in a 150 by 80 R17 Avon tire. Out back, you've got a single 300 millimeter rotor with a four piston Brembo caliper. And the rear wheel is a 16 by a massive seven and a half inch cast aluminum wheel. And it's wrapped in a 24 by 50 
R16V Avon tire. The rear tire is massive. The front tire is no joke. The front tire is pretty big on its own. And surprisingly, the bike handles much better than you would think with those large tires. I would say the ride uh, could definitely be considered stiff, uh, very sporty, which you would expect uh, on a motorcycle with this type of power and this type of handling. Uh, the bike is extremely nimble for its weight. I think it weighs about 650 pounds, uh, maybe a little more than that. And it does not feel like a 650 pound bike. It feels much, much lighter. Red line is 6,500. I'm riding at about 3,000 RPM in third gear. I'm going uh, 48 miles an hour. Yeah, I can, I can see the appeal to this. This would be a fun bike to have just to go, go have fun with. reach to the bars uh, position with a seat and everything for someone my height. I'm 6'2", uh, about a 33 inch inseam, and it is a little bit cramped for me. I think if you were 5'7 to 6 foot tall, you'd be right in the sweet spot of where the seating position is. Uh, it's not terribly uncomfortable at 6 foot 2 but it's a little cramped and I do like the foot peg placement though I'd much rather have it like this than uh, any further back or any further forward you get an almost imperceptible amount of vibration through the handlebars uh, almost none through the mirrors it's very very smooth engine like I said before yeah I am getting some heat on the inside of my left thigh right now um, kind of down where that, I guess it's the oil tank. So I can see where in hot weather uh, that could get to be pretty uh, significant. I really like the gauges. They're very clear, very easy to see. They've got a lot of information in a small amount of space. Uh, it's got a lot of menu driven. There's a lot of idiot lights on both sides uh, Actually, it's very uh, comprehensive for this dash I mean at 60 miles an hour, I'm still in fourth gear and it's not even 3,000 rpm I would like to get this out on some twisty roads. It feels like a bike that really handles well in spite of its weight and size and in spite of that big fat back tire it still seems very nimble I really enjoyed my time riding the Rocket R3 I will say that around town on surface streets it's a pretty bumpy ride the suspension is not very compliant even though I know there is full adjustability on the front and the rear shocks so it'd be interesting to try that just to see if that could make a difference but for now let's head back to the studio and I'm going to give you my final conclusions on this Triumph Rocket R3 So this is the part of the review where I kind of give you my final analysis and I like to rate the motorcycle on a scale from one to five with one being the worst, five being the best in a variety of different categories. So as far as styling goes, now that's always a subjective thing that's very personal to everybody, but personally I think this bike kills it. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I think it's one of the best looking motorcycles I've ever seen in any category. I can't think of anything Triumph could do to really improve on the styling of the bike. I think it's just, it's just out of this world. To me it looks like a piece of art. It just is, is, is just amazing. So I'm going to give it a 4.8 out of 5 for styling. I am not qualified 
to push this bike to its limits. So when I'm rating performance, I'm only rating what I was able to experience, which is nothing close to what this bike is capable of. There are videos out there on YouTube where other guys really push this motorcycle to its limits and you know give you the top speeds and things like that. This is not my motorcycle. It's a press bike, and I'm always a little bit uh, hesitant to really go beyond the limits of my limits, certainly, <laughs> and this bike will definitely do that. I'm going to give performance 4.9 out of 5. Oh, come, on, come on, this thing has 165 horsepower, 163 pound-feet of torque. This thing is just a... It's just an amazing machine when it comes to engineering and performance. And I will say that transmission is buttery smooth. Very good job on the six-speed transmission. Comfort is another area that's a little difficult to rate for a bike like this because it's a roadster. It's not supposed to be comfortable like a touring bike or a sport touring bike, but nevertheless, I found it to be relatively comfortable, even though I think I might be a little bit on the tall side for this motorcycle. Uh, the seat was comfortable, and the bike is very smooth. The engine is really smooth. You, didn't, you see no vibration in the mirrors. You don't pick up any uh, noticeable vibration in the hand grips. I did feel heat coming off the engine. That's the only thing that would concern me in the summer. Now, it's been pretty cool here. When I tested the bike, it never got over maybe 75 degrees, so it wasn't a huge issue. But I'm thinking maybe on a 90 degree, 95 degree day, that heat coming off that engine could be a problem. Now, I only noticed heat on the left side of the engine, which I thought was kind of interesting since the exhaust manifold is on the right side of the engine. But most of the heat I felt was on my left inner thigh. Now, if you own a Rocket 3R, what has your experience been as far as engine heat? Please put that in the comments down below. I think some of our viewers might find that very interesting. For a heavy bike with a big fat rear tire, the Rocket 3R handles much better than you think it would or that you would expect. It's I was surprised at how nimble it really was. And it does not feel like a 641-pound bike. That's the first impression I had when I drove this bike off the dealer parking lot was, wow, this thing feels much lighter than 650 pounds. And it does handle better, given you know that it is a heavy bike and that it's got that big rear tire. I'm going to give handling 3.4 out of 5. In spite of that, I think you can have a lot of fun with this bike on twisty roads. The Rocket 3R has advanced cornering ABS brakes and cornering traction control, and it comes standard with Hill Start Assist. That I found pretty impressive. The technology package on the dash I felt like was uh, beyond what you might expect from a motorcycle like this. However, I was a little surprised that it doesn't come standard with heated grips and tire pressure monitoring. For a motorcycle 24,000, I thought it that would be included. Nevertheless, they are relatively inexpensive options for this motorcycle. And they also offer that uh, TFT upgrade where you can control a GoPro. I've never seen that on any other brand motorcycle. And they also offer navigation turn-by-turn -turn directions and Bluetooth communication as options. So I would say from a technology standpoint, this bike should get at least a 4 out of 5. I'm only going to give the motorcycle a 2 out of 5 for maintenance. I think it's going to be a struggle to maintain this motorcycle from the owner's perspective. You have to remove some body parts just to get to the oil filter. And without a center stand, you're going to have to figure out a way to lift the motorcycle to do any other uh, serious maintenance like removing the wheels or whatever. So I'm only going to give it 2 out of 5. The MSRP of the 2023 Rocket 3R as it sits in my garage in sapphire black, pretty much standard equipment, is $23,895. I'm going to give that a value rating of 2.5 out of 5. 
price is not going to keep people from buying this motorcycle. The guy that wants this bike, you can't get anything like this anywhere else. There really is no competition for this bike. I, I almost consider it a class by itself. I know there are other motorcycles out there that are roadster style bikes, but this bike is so unique. It's such a work of art that it's hard to determine a value of it because this is going to provide you with a lot of fun. It's going to give you uh, something that nobody else on your block has. Uh, you can show up at bike night with this motorcycle and you can impress everybody there. It is a really cool bike and probably not your only motorcycle. It might be your second or third bike, one that you want to take out on the weekends or just show off to your friends. So, uh, But nevertheless, I'm going to say the value is about two and a half out of five. So that's my review of the 2023 Triumph Rocket 3R. Now, if you take all of my individual ratings and you add them up and you average them out, you're not going to get my overall number. I'm just, these are random numbers. They don't really have any true meaning other than to me. I'm still going to say overall, I would rate this bike a 4 out of 5. I mean, I think it's an amazing motorcycle. This is not a motorcycle I would probably ever own. It's not even the motorcycle that I wanted to review. I wanted to review one of the Bonnevilles. But this was the motorcycle that Triumph had available, and I didn't want to miss an opportunity to ride a Triumph. I'd never ridden a Triumph before, and i got to tell you, I'm very impressed. The quality of workmanship. The uh, engine itself, as I said in one of my other segments, if they would put this engine into a touring bike with saddlebags and a trunk and a really nice setup, I, I really think they could give a Goldwing a run for the money. They definitely have the performance. It's a smooth engine. It's a powerful engine. It's got everything you could want from an engineering and performance standpoint. So I would love to see that engine in a touring bike. So this is the ultimate two-wheel toy for a motorcycle rider. This is, this is as good as it gets. Again, not my style bike, not my style of riding, but I realize there are a lot of guys out there that would just absolutely love to have a motorcycle like this. So if you liked this video, please take a second to click that like button. That really helps my ratings with YouTube. And make sure to share this video with your friends, sp spread it around the internet or on your social media. Thanks again. Remember what I always say, I don't really care what you write. Ride often, but ride safe.